Hey everyone, Yan Zhao back again. Today, I want to talk about adventuring stories. Now, these could be stories for a book or a comic, or especially for role-playing games. And usually for adventuring, it's built around three pillars. One, you have combat. Another, social interactions, and the third is exploration. When you're writing, planning out combat, encounters, obstacles that your characters may meet, whether they're actually fighting or it's more of a challenge, or perhaps social interactions, how characters interact with each other or interact with the world. But the third pillar is less common and takes a little more planning, and that's exploration. For social interaction and various forms of combat, the characters that your players will interact with, be they NPCs or just side characters in your stories, they'll all have their own motivations and desires. So it's pretty easy to have guidelines on how your main characters or players will interact with them. A good writer or DM can really craft intricate interactions in just a few minutes. Exploring, however, well, that's something different. Building an engaging story with exploration usually takes a lot of time and preparation. And when it's not done well, it's just kind of a slog and a hindrance to your players and to the DM. But if you use the right mindset, it can be just as rewarding an experience as combat. When people think of exploration in D&D, what usually comes to mind is some giant hex crawl whether it's going through a forest or a gigantic underground dungeon that players have to get through, searching through various kinds of land masses and maybe finding lost ruins and treasures. And those are very cool and they're a lot of fun, but you would use the same skills if you had to go around a city looking for a lost dog. Or maybe you had to break into the enemy's house and find incriminating evidence against him. Also, it helps to stop your players from being murder hobos. There are two key aspects to make this exploration fun and meaningful. Number one is motivation, and the second is discovery. So let's say you want your players to go into the lost jungle. Well, why would anybody want to go into a lost jungle where people don't usually come out? You need to give them some sort of motivation, some sort of desire. Are they looking for a player's long lost mom and she went on an expedition in there. Could it be that they're chasing a bunch of bandits who have stolen the town's prized hen? That might also be a good reason to go into a jungle. And depending on your players, it could be something as simple as they're motivated by the thought of ancient treasure, or perhaps there's a lost temple to their god and patron best thing to do is to really understand what your players want out of their own backstories and sort of dovetail it in. Find a reason for them to be in that area. This will lay breadcrumbs to further adventures. And once they've decided to go into these areas, well, you have to give them some payoff, some reward, treasure, information, Maybe they get to use skills to disarm or avoid dangerous traps. Or maybe there's some secret information that only they will know that pertains to later in your game. One of the pitfalls to this kind of exploration is that a lot of DMs tend to let the situation devolve into a series of skill checks. Are people just making repetitive survival checks in order to track someone? Skill checks are great, but they can also really punish characters who don't have it. What if you have to manipulate an arcane glyph in order to deactivate some kind of trap, but none of the characters in your party have arcana? What are they gonna do? One of the simple ways to fix this kind of situation is you need to create variable ways to solve a puzzle. So for example, let's say you're in an enemy's house. They're hiding stolen loot, and you need to find this loot so that they can be charged by the authorities. Let's say again, the loot is hidden under a loose floorboard. If your characters fail either a perception or maybe an investigation check, that's just game over. 
you don't succeed. Something that might work better is a rug that seems out of place, or it could be something like they're hiding a secret manuscript inside a holy book, but you know that this character doesn't believe in any sort of deity. The book itself would seem rather out of place, and it's something that your characters would know. This is very satisfying for your players, or your readers if you're a writer, because they pick it up in their mind and they're able to Sherlock Holmes out these clues by themselves. Another way that discovery really enhances the exploration aspect of your game is when exploring can lead to something else. So for example, you are looking for that lost dog that ran off into the woods, and when you you find it after many skill checks or many animals in your way and what you find is that there is an orc raiding party in the woods and it's about to get to your settlement and this could kick off the next part of an adventure if you're in that bad guy's bedroom and you find the missing loot under the plank but while you're there you also find a letter from some foreigner where he specifically hired the thief to steal all this loot in order to undermine the government or undermine your patron or leader or knight or whatever. These kind of discovery aspects can lead your crew down the path that you want them to go story-wise. It's relatively rare that you have one adventure stop, another adventure stop, another adventure stop. When you're building a larger campaign, whether it be homebrew or whether you're using a pre-made book for the campaign, by placing these kind of trails, it really helps the players know what to do instead of an open world sandbox where they're like, uh, I don't know, what do you do next? Who can say? Exploration is really one of the ways that you can enhance any form of tabletop role playing campaign or writing. This really brings the player or the reader into your world. It allows them to gradually find out information about their location and the world itself without having to give a rather clunky info dump. So by using these techniques, I think you can really enhance the player interaction and enjoyment of your campaign. So everyone, we'll be back soon with more tips on writing campaigns and making tabletop role-playing games and writing more interesting. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. There'll definitely be more. Give it a thumbs up and leave your comment down below. How have you used exploration as a fundamental part of your D&D campaign?